Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. World War II aircraft that led the D-Day invasion flies again. P-51D Mustang Sierra Su-2 to lead Super Bowl 52 flyover. And FAA approves first SCC for Smart Sky. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's February 2nd and this is Airborne Unlimited. The aircraft that led a formation of more than 800 C-47s to Normandy to draw paratroopers on D-Day has taken its first flight since the restoration began. On January 31, 2018 at 1 p.m. in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, D-Day C-47 that saw brother returned to the sky. It has been nearly 10 years since C-47 that saw brother flew, but the airplane's incredible D-Day history was only recently discovered by U.S. Air Force historian Matt Scales. This airplane, which led the first major blow in the Allied liberation of Europe, was found in an aircraft boneyard in Wisconsin. After a far-reaching fundraising campaign, supporters made it possible for the CAF to acquire and begin an unprecedented restoration returning Vassal Brother to its original D-Day configuration. The CAF estimates that more than 22,000 hours have already gone into this project. Vassal Brother will head to its new home in San Marcos, Texas. There, it will be assigned to the CAF Central Texas Wing. In June 2019, Vassal Brother will participate in the celebration of the 75th anniversary of D-Day, flying along with several other World War II aircraft across the Atlantic Ocean in Duxford, England, and then to Normandy, France. After the break, FAA approves AMOC responding to Southwind Cabin Heater AD. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has approved a global alternate method of compliance covering AD 2017-06-03 on Southwind 8000 series cabin heaters. The AD requires that owner-operators of Southwind heaters comply within the next 10 hours of heater operating time or next scheduled maintenance activity, whichever occurs first, and then repeat compliance every two years or 250 hours. One of the distinguishing features of the authorized Twin Commander Service Center network is the requirement that technicians be formally trained in commander-specific maintenance publications and procedures. Two such Twin Commander 690-695B maintenance initial training classes are scheduled in 2018. Classes will be conducted May 7th through 15th and September 17th through 25th. The classes will be held at Eagle Creek Aviation Services in Indianapolis. Flight Lieutenant Liam and Lieutenant Chris became the first Royal Air Force and Royal Navy pilots, respectively, to proceed straight from flying training in a Hawk to fly the multi-role combat aircraft. With no two-seat variant of the F-35, the first flight for any pilot in a Lightning is always solo. For the sixth year in a row, the U.S. Parachute Association is reporting record growth, indicating that more and more people are not only jumping for the first time, but are taking up the sport as a hobby and a passion. In 2017, USPA membership again set record highs, ending the year with more than 39,000 members. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
the wings of the North Air Museum's P-51 Mustang Sierra Su-2 will lead the U.S. Air Force Heritage Flight over U.S. Bank Stadium at Super Bowl 52 on February 4, 2018. Sierra Su-2 will be the first in a diamond formation, which will include two A-10 Thunderbolt IIs and an F-16 Fighting Falcon. Wings of the North is proud to support the USAF Heritage Flight Program, which presents the evolution of USAF air power by flying today's state-of-the-art fighter aircraft in close formation with vintage fighter aircraft. Warbird pilot Steve Hinton will fly Sierra Su-2 for the Air Force Heritage Flight Foundation. Sierra Su-2 is one of a handful of flying Mustangs that actually saw combat in World War II. The U.S. Army Air Force assigned her to the 402nd Fighter Squadron and the 370th Fighter Group of the 9th Air Force in the European Theater of Operations during 1945. First Lieutenant Robert Bonna was her regular pilot, and he named the plane for a girl in his high school. Sierra Su-2 was fully restored in 2014 by Air Corps Aviation in Bemidji, Minnesota. After these messages, FAA approves first SCC for Smart Sky. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. The FAA has awarded an STC to Avidine Manufacturing Partner for SmartSky for the installation and operation of a SmartSky 4G LTE system, in this case on a Cessna Citation XL. SmartSky expects these follow-on STCs to begin to be available this summer. That timing aligns well with the planned completion of the majority of the network coverage expansion effort currently underway across the continental United States. SmartSky's patent beamforming technology delivers multi-gigabyte per hour data throughout an industry's lowest latency, both to and from an aircraft setting a new airborne performance standard, all at the lowest cost per bit. SmartSky's 4G LTE-based network has been live since 2017, and coverage expansion remains on track to support launching service nationwide in 2018. The long lead time steps of on-site viability testing, permitting and backhaul connection have all been completed at over 96% of the planned nationwide ground sites. More than 40% of those sites are already in their final stages of deployment or are already on air. SATCOM Direct serves as SmartSky's exclusive customer service and support provider. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.